الحمد للہ الحمد للہ وقفا و صلاۃ و سلام الذين استفا خصوصا على افضلهم وخاتم النبيين محمد الامين وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين اما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى كما ورد في سوره البقره اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم واذ قال ربك للملائكه اني جاعل في الارض خليفه قالوا تجعل فيها من يفسد فيها ويسفك الدماء ونحن نصبح بحمدك ونقدس لك قال اني اعلم ما لا تعلمون وقال تبارك وتعالى واذ قلنا للملائكه اسجدوا لادم فسجدوا الا ابليس ابا واستكبر وكان من الكافرين وقال عز وجل قل اهبطوا منها جميعا فاما ياتينكم مني هدى فمن تبع هدايا فلا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون والذين كفروا وكذبوا باياتنا اولئك اصحاب النار هم فيها خالدون وقال جل وعلا كما ورد في سوره النساء رسلا مبشرين ومنذرين لئلا يكون للناس على الله حجة بعد الرسل وكان الله عزيزا حكيما صدق الله العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي اللهم ربنا الهمنا رشدنا واعذنا من شرور انفسنا اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم ربنا زدنا ايمانا وهدى وعلما نافعا وعملا صالحا متقبلا امين يا رب العالمين dear brothers and sisters and sons and daughters of islam assalam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh as you must be remembering out of the 10 topics which we enlisted last evening regarding our discussion about iman the faith in islam last evening we could discuss fully three of them that is number 1 the literal meanings of the word iman number 2 technical definition of the term iman number 3 the subject matter of iman and then we discussed the fourth topic that is the main articles of iman but the last part of this topic that is the relative importance of the three main pillars of iman the relative importance of these as compared to one another that we couldn't include in our last evening's discussion but today before i proceed to complete that part that is the relative importance of the three main articles of faith and then proceed to the fourth discussion which is actually due to the fifth discussion that is very basic very important and let me say very complicated also that is the two aspects of iman i propose number 1 to review the last part of our discussion of the last evening and again you know narrate what is iman what are the main articles of faith and secondly i want to add something to it although i do fear that in this way we might have to extend the time for this discussion on iman either for one session or for one full day but i feel that there are problems in the minds of people and a brother yesterday asked me a question after my lecture and maybe those things are agitating the minds of other brothers also so i want to add something and here also again as i did 
last evening. I solicit your support by concentrating your attention and number two, by praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He gives me the ability to complete this discussion. Now what are the articles of the faith that we discussed? Number one, this universe is a creation. It was created by a creator at a definite time and it has a beginning as well as an end. At this point I emphasized it's common now to science as well as the Quran. Our physics and astronomy has reached that point, that Big Bang Theory, that there was a definite beginning of this universe. And also now we believe, the scientists believe, that there is going to be an end also. But now the Creator, He has no beginning, no end. He is from ever and He will remain forever. Now you can call this Creator by any name. قُلِ اِدُ اللَّهَ عَوِدُ الرَّحْمَانِ اَيَّمْ مَا تَدُوا فَلَهُ الْأَسْبَعُ الْحُسْنَى But you have to keep in mind a few points about this Creator. Number one, He is not only one but also alone. There is no partner unto Him. There is none like Him, similar to Him. لَيْسَ كَمِسْلَهِ شَيُّنْ He neither begot nor was begotten. This is actually, you may say, the translation of Surah Al-Ikhlas. قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدُ اللَّهُ الصَّمَدُ لَمْ يَلِدْ وَلَمْ يُولَدْ وَلَمْ يَقُلْ لَهُ كُفُوا وَنَّحَدْ Then all the good names belong to Him. فَلَهُ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى he has all the good attributes and to a magnitude of infinity. He is omnipotent, he is omniscient, he is omnipresent. Huwa ala kulli shayin qadir, huwa bi kulli shayin alim, huwa maakum ayna maakum tum. He is with you wherever you are. He knows everything and he has all the power and authority. Precisely this is what we call Tawheed or the Iman Billah. Now the second point that I made, and actually I want to add something to that second point today. Man is the masterpiece of, of his creation. Quran says, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ التَّقْوِيمِ We have created man on the best pattern, the best pattern. Also it says, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمَ وَحَمَلْنَاهُمْ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ وَرَوَقْنَاهُمْ مِنَ الْطَيِّبَاتِ وَفَضْوَلْنَاهُمْ عَلَىٰ كَثِيرٍ مِّمَّنْ خَلَقْنَا تَفْضِيلًا We have honored the progeny of Adam and we have given them the fadila over our creatures, most of our creatures. Then there is another expression in Surah Al-Saad. خَلَقْتُهُ بِيَدَيَّ I created man with both of my hands. It's very peculiar. But here I am only quoting this ayah. The real meaning of this ayah I will refer to again during my talk today. Then there is a hadith. It is agreed upon by Imam Bukhari as well as Imam Muslim, Rahimahum Allah, both of them. Muttafaqul Alayh. And it is from Abu Huraira Razi Allah Ta'ala According to this hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has been reported to have said, Inna Allah khalaqa Adama ala suratihi. And the exact translation of this hadith you can find in the Bible. The source is the same, source of Bible. 
and you don't think that everything in Bible is wrong. So the source is there, source is the same. In the Laha Khalaqa Adama Allah Suratihi. And you find the words in the Bible, and God created man in his own image. Exact. So here, Quran and Bible, Torah, they are agreeing. And let me make another point. As far as this issue that man is supreme in the creation, this is also agreed upon between the science of today and Quran. Because we know that we have two types of creations. The creations of the creatures without having life. Well, they are at a lower level of existence than the living creatures having life. They are at a higher level. And you know that according to the biologists, Homo sapiens, that is man, stands at the top of the evolution tree. He is the most evolved creature having life. This much is agreed between the Quran and the science. But it is at this very point that I want to add a few things about the levels and stages of creation. And now, please count with me seven points. Number one, there are two levels of creation, a higher level and a lower level. The higher level, in Arabic we have two words for these two levels different, taqween and takhliq. Taqween is something else, takhliq is something else. But at least I don't know any word in English for taqween. So we have to use in English the same word creation. Creation at a higher level, creation at a lower level. Now what is, according to the Quran, the level, higher level is Alamul Amr. And the lower level is Alamul Khalq. And Quran says, Alalahul Khalq wal Amr. Both these levels of creation belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Point number two. At the higher level, that is the alam amr, no time factor is involved at all. Here, the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, kun, manifests itself, becomes executed instantly. إِنَّمَا أَمْرُهُ إِذَا أَرَادَ شَيْئًا فَإِنَّمَا يَقُولُ لَهُ كُنْ فَيَكُونَ No time element. But at the level of khalq, time factor is always involved. At many places Quran says, خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْلَرْضَ فِي سِتَّةِ أَيَّامٍ This is again common between Bible and Quran. Six days. And these are six millenniums, not days, not days according to our, you know, calculations, twenty-four hours. These are the days of Allah. In the yawm in the rabbika, kal se sanatim mimma ta'uddun. The day of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may be a thousand years long according to your calculations. There is a day fifty thousand years long. So we can say these are six millenniums. But the point that I wanted to make is, at the alam am no time factor involved whatsoever. But at the level of alam khalq always there is a time factor involved. Fertilized ovum in the womb of the mother takes nine months. 
to be completed as a human infant. So from this to the creation of the universe, at the level of Khalq, time factor is always involved. Point number three, human knowledge or the physical sciences, they can know and investigate only the alam khalq This is the world of matter. Your sense organs and your intellect can go only to this extent, not beyond that. Beyond that is alam amr And this is alam ghayb I pointed out yesterday. The first condition, al-Islam means, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِي هُدَلْ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ The domain of science and physical science and human investigation and research is limited to this world of khalq. You can't go beyond that. You can't peep through your human resources into the alam amr Point number four. The first command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the big kun, it emanated from him and it took the form and manifested itself in the form of light. But mind you, don't confuse this light with the physical light with which we deal in physics. This light has particles, photons. This light, although it has the maximum speed in the physical world, 186,000 miles per second, still it takes time. It takes time. Time element is there. So this light, don't confuse with it. The light, you may call it the Nurullah, the divine light. And that was the first manifestation of the command of Kun. It manifested itself in the form of light, which had no photons, no particles, no heat, no temperature. It was cold and inert. Cold is not a good word. Cool and inert. So that was light. And please note now, at this level of creation, this is alam amr And at this level, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made two creations, two creatures who have self-consciousness. Number one, the spirits of all the human beings. The human spirits don't belong to this world of khalq. They belong to the world of amr. Ruh, al-arwah. And they were in millions and billions. There's the hadith, al-arwahu juludum mujannada. The spirit, the ruh of every one of us, starting from Adam till the last son of Adam or daughter of Adam, who will live on this planet. The spirits of all of them were created. And the first spirit created, first of all, was the spirit of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There is a hadith to this effect, although most of the Muhaddisin don't agree to the authenticity of the hadith. But most of the Mufassiri, they accept it. And that is, أَوَّلُ مَا خَلَقُ اللَّهُ نُورِي What does it mean? The spirit of Muhammad sallallahu Because this was created, all the spirits, human spirits were created out of light. So you can call, the spirit of Muhammad is the nur of Muhammad. And that was the first creation. And the second, they were the angels. They are also created from nur. And there is a hadith to this effect. From Hazrat Aisha رضي الله تعالى عنها, and it is included in the Sahih of Imam Muslim رحمه الله, which says, 
ان اللہ خلق الملا من النور دی اینجلس ور کریٹڈ آؤٹ آف لائٹ بٹ دس لائٹ ناٹ دی فزیکل لائٹ ٹو وچ آئی ول کم لیٹر آن آلسو نوٹ ہیئر دیٹ ایٹ دس اسٹیج اللہ سبحان و تعالی دی کریٹر took two covenants from all the human spirits. The first covenant, very important, mentioned in detail in Surah Al-Araf, which we call Ahdi Alast. You are all present there. Without these bodies, in spiritual forms, we were there, standing before our Lord. And he asked us a question, Alastu bi rabbikum? And all of us agreed and said, Bala, you are our Lord. We agree. So this is the covenant which we made. Every human being made that covenant. But the spirit of every human being, there were no bodies, no physical bodies, no physical existence. The world of physical existence Existence didn't start even. That is alam al That is the world of matter. It will, it will come later on. And the second covenant that was taken was from the spirits of all the prophets, which we call Misaqul Nabiyyin. These were the two covenants taken at that. Now come to the fifth point. After some time, the duration of which we cannot know. Started the second low and lower level of creation, that is the alam al khalq with a big explosion, which the scientists are now calling the Big Bang. This explosion took place in part of that light, That light, a small portion of it, exploded. And this Big Bang resulted in a huge, enormous mass of fire, ball of fire. This consisted of photons, very minute particles. to the size of one millionth of an electron. There was a time when the science had reached only the electrons and protons and neutrons. Now it has gone much farther away. And the temperature was very high. Not millions, but billions and trillions degrees Fahrenheit. And this mass was rot rotating with a tremendous speed. Now, this is the point where scientists have reached. And this is the beginning of this world of matter. This is the lower level of creation. This is the alam al And please note, at this level, a third creation, having self-consciousness, was created out of this fire. And now we know They are the jinns. وَالْجَانَّ خَلَقْنَاهُ مِنْ قَبْلُ مِنْ نَارِ السَّمُومِ We created the jinns much before. This, you know, the life on this planet. And this life in, on this planet, at the top is our physical bodies. Homo sapiens, the species, much before them, genes were created out of fire. وَالْجَانَّ خَلَقْنَاهُ مِنْ قَبْلُ مِنْ نَارِ السَّمُومِ And also note, one of these genes, he attained a very high level of knowledge, gnosis, consciousness, And by dint of his worship, 
he became very close to the malaika and in a way associated with them the name of this jinn was azazil he would later become the iblis of the shaitan now come to the sixth point then started a very long process you may call it evolution pure energy photons turning into physical elements then chemical evolution starting with the smaller and simpler compounds to more and more complex compounds from inorganic going to organic which has the capacity to give birth to life you may call it evolution but the better word is descent coming down is actually tanazzulat as our philosophers have termed them the first tanazzul the divine command kun taking the form of divine light second tanazzul in a part of that divine light an explosion of big bang which created a ball a huge ball of fire and the third tanazzul is now this is now going down to be condensed into this materials in organic and organic compounds and there steps this huge ball of fire split into galaxies then the stars were formed and the planets were formed it's all going down and down one of the millions or billions of stars is our sun and one of the planets which are rotating around the sun is our earth then these planets started cooling down what happened gases went out and they took the form of this atmosphere which enveloped the earth gas is coming out from this very ball of fire when it was cooling down and it cooled down to have this crust of clay round the earth and then in the atmosphere the two gases hydrogen and oxygen by some command of allah subhanahu wa taala they turned into water the scientists say for millions and millions of years there was way rain and rain and rain and rain and then with the interaction of the clay and water started the first germ of life all these things you know you are very familiar with these things i don't want to go into detail but then started a process of evolution now this is going up up till now it was coming down these are called tanazzulat now it is evolution now you are going up from the lower forms of living beings unicellular and so on and so on and so on till you know homo sapiens the species appeared homo sapiens and now allah subhanahu wa taala selected one individual from the species in the allah istafa adama istifa means to choose someone out of a number of things istifa in the allah istafa adama wa nuhan wa ala ibrahim wa ala imran ala al alamin the ayah from surah al imran the spirit of adam that was there created but before which was there in some cold storage divine cold storage all the spirits human spirits that was instilled into this individual homo sapien and then he became adam alayhi salatu wassalam he became the vice president of allah subhanahu wa taala adam is the only creation in which both the worlds 
عالم عبر as well as عالم خلق they are joined together and this body it belongs to عالم خلق the malaika they belong to عالم عمر only the jinns belong to عالم خلق only no spirits but it is human being having a composite existence both the alam e amr the spirit coming from alam e amr and the body evolving from the alam e khalq joined together and this is man the vice student of allah on earth and this is the meaning khalaqtuhu bi yadayya i have created this man with both of my hands ala lahu khalq wal amr the two arms of allah subhanahu wa taala are the two worlds or levels of creation the alam e khalq the alam e amr and in man only both these alams both these worlds both these levels of creation meet now as a sign of coronation of adam as the vice president of allah subhanahu wa taala allah commanded all the angels to prostrate before adam this was the coronation of adam and mind you because that azazil was associated with the malaika due to his high level of consciousness gnosis knowledge and worship he was also commanded all the angels mind you i pointed this to this very important point yesterday also fasajadal malaikatu kulluhum ajma'un and that is why i you know recited the ayat in the beginning today bai qad rabbuka lil malaikati inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa then after a few ayat وَيَسْقُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ تَسْجُدُوا لِآدَمَ فَتَجَدُوا إِلَّا إِبْلِيسَ and it is cleared in Surah Al-Kahf who was this Iblis كَانَ مِنَ الْجِنِّ فَفَسَقَ عَنْ أَمْرِ رَبِّهِ he was not from among the angels he was a jinn angels never disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala لَا يَعْسُونَ اللَّهَ مَا أَمَرَهُمْ وَيَفْعَلُونَ مَا يُمَرُونَ these are the words in Surah Al-Tahreem Angels don't disobey, but he was from the jinns. Kana min al jinn fa fa saqan amr rabbi. Fasajad al malaika tu kulluhu majmoun illa iblis. Aba yakuna baat sajidin. He refused to prostrate. He disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa taala. He said, "I am better than him, superior to him. Ana khairu min hu." خلقته خلقتني من نار وخلقته من طين out of haughtiness pride and jealousy he refused to prostrate before adam and then he became iblis what the meaning of iblis the most frustrated one the most disappointed one this is the literal meaning of iblis and now please mind this is the beginning of the enmity of iblis and his progeny to adam and his progeny inna shaitan lakum aduwan fattakhizuhu aduwa this adawa this enmity start from there it will continue iblis wanted you know that allah subhanahu wa taala gives him the long life to remain till qiyamah and he will prove his point that adam was not equal to the status given to him by allah subhanahu wa taala i will prove they will disobey you they will be ungrateful to you i will prove you give me the time and it was granted to him and that's the enmity of iblis and his progeny to adam and his progeny 
Now please remember this incident which happened between Adam and Iblis is so important, so basic to the philosophy of the Quran that it has been repeated seven times in the Quran. You imagine? You find it in Surah Al-Baqarah, fourth part, fourth section. Again, Surah Al-Araf, second section. Again, Surah Al-Hijr. Again, Surah Al-Bani Israel. Again, Surah Al-Kahf. Again, Surah Al-Taha. Again, Surah Al-Sad. Seven places in Quran. This has been repeated. This is the basic question. This is the basic issue of the philosophy of the Quran. Now I want to infer some points from whatever I have said. The seven points which I have made up till now, keep them before you. And there are ten inferences. Number one, man has a double or composite existence. The spiritual existence, which is not only equal to the malaika, the angel, but superior to the malaika. Because the malaika were asked to prostrate before Adam. And the animal or physical or material existence, these two are joined together. Regarding the spiritual existence, man is supreme, superior to the, what to speak of jinns, even to the angels. But regarding his animal existence, his bodily existence, his material existence, he is at the lowest in the three. What to speak of angels, he is lower than the jinns. The jinns were created out of fire. And man was created, this body was created out of clay. I have quoted the ayah, خَلَقْتَنِي مِن نَارٍ وَخَلَقْتَهُ مِن تِيمٍ Why should I prostrate before Adam? I don't see any reason. I am superior to him. You created me out of fire, you created him out of clay. And fire is superior to clay. The couplet, beautiful couplet from Sheikh Saadi, Rahimahullah, آدمی زادہ ترفہ ماجونست از فرشتہ سرشتہ وز حیوان this human being is you know a very peculiar composite existence there is an angel in him as well as an animal in him very correct now come to the fourth point when did the human life start It started when the spirits were created. My beginning is not from my birth out of the womb of my mother, nor it started from the conception. I am coming from a very far off point. I was created. And each one of us, we were there. Then we gave that, that covenant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we were self-conscious of ourselves. Otherwise the covenant and the agreement is baseless, useless. If you don't have a self-consciousness, if you are not conscious of yourself, how can you make a covenant? So the life started there. Our existence, you may say existence. Then we were placed in some cold storage. This is a pause. Then we opened our eyes in this world and now with a physical body. This is the life on this planet. This is the life in this world. This Quran says al hayatu dunya Then there is going to be another pause. Our body Dust thou art to dust returnest. It came from clay, it will go to the clay. Minha khalaqnaakum. 
وَفِيهَا نُعِيدُكُمْ That is the body. My spirit was not created out of clay. This body was created out of clay. This is khalq. مِنْهَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ وَفِيهَا نُعِيدُكُمْ وَمِنْهَا نُخْرِجُكُمْ تَارَةَ نُخْرَى Then there will be resurrection. We will again be given a body. That resurrection will again going to be with the body. The soul which the death after death goes. إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ The soul or the spirit is coming from Allah and it returns to Allah. And this body came from the clay and returned to the clay. How beautiful it is. Something coming and going, returning to the same place, coming from high level. إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ and minha khalaqnakum wa fiha nu'idukum. And there is a point of contact of the two for this period of our life on this planet. After resurrection, then we become eternal. Wa inna ala jannatun abada, awla narun abada. So this is a very difficult part of the philosophy of Quran. And there is an ayah in Surah Al-Mumin. Most of the people just, you know, skip over this. Don't ponder over it. The people in Jahannam will say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, رَبَّنَا أَمَّتَّ نَسْدَتَيْنِ وَأَحْيَيْتَ نَسْدَتَيْنِ فَاعْتَرَفْنَا بِذُلُوبِنَا فَهَلْ إِلَىٰ خُرُوجٍ مِنْ سَبِيلٍ Oh, our Lord! You put death on us twice. And you made us living twice. A mata, a To put death on someone and to again put to life, bring to life someone which is dead. And isnatain, twice. Rabbana amatta isnatain. أَمَتَّ نَسْنَتَيْنِ وَأَحْيَيْتَ نَسْنَتَيْنِ فَاعْتَرَفْنَا بِذُنُوبِنَا فَهَلْ إِلَىٰ خُرُوجُ مِنْ سَبِيلِ There are three periods of our existence. In between three there are two pauses of death. First existence in the spiritual form in عالم أمر only. Then the first death. Then first إِحْيَا in this world with a body. Then the second death, which will come to us. Then the second ahya, and that is for the hereafter. And then we become eternal. So this is man. This is the concept of man. This is the position of man. Now come to the fifth point. Man is wiser than of Allah. And he is, you know, not a small thing. Now the fifth point. Even this animal existence of human beings, because Homo sapiens stands at the top of the evolution tree. So this is also bestowed upon by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with very high faculties. And you count them three. And I am, you know, denoting to the eye of Surah Bani Israel. Inna sam'a wal basara wal fu'ada kullu laika kaana anhu masoola. You are all responsible on the basis of these three faculties that I have given you. You can hear, you can see, and then you can infer. I quoted the ayah. أَفَلَا يَنظُرُونَ إِلَى الْإِبْلِ كَيْفَ خُلِقَتْ وَإِلَى السَّمَاءِ كَيْفَ رُفِقَتْ Can't you see with your own eyes our signs? Can't you use your akr, your intellect to have our knowledge? To recognize us? Who created these things? Have they come into existence without anything? Without any creator? 
لک تو دی سائنز آف آورس ان نفی خلق السماوات والارض واختلاف اللیل والنہار والفلک اللتی تدری فی البحر بما ینفع الناس وما انظر اللہ من السماء من ما انفاہیا بھی الارض بعد موتها وبس فیہا من کل دابت وتصریف الریاح والصحاب المسخر بین السماء والارض لا آیات اللی قومی آقلون In all these physical phenomena, there are signs, our signs. See them, observe them. Didan digaramos, sunidan digaramos. Don't see only like animals and don't hear only like animals. You must see with human eyes and you must hear with human ears. And then infer and you will know us. اِنَّ السَّمْعَ وَالْبَصَرَ وَالْفُوَادَ كُلُّ أُولَائِكَ كَانَ عَنْهُ مَسُولًا But there is the point number six. There is the another existence, the spiritual existence. The spirit which comes from Allah. قُلِ الرُّوحُ مِنْ عَمْرِ رَبِّي And it is on the basis of the spirit that man became vice president of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And only, you know, it has been said twice in Quran, فَإِذَا سَوَّيْتُهُ وَنَفَقْتُ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِي فَقَعُوا لَهُ سَعْجِدِينَ When I have finished this and completed the creation of this man and instilled into him, blown into him from my own spirit, then fall down before him in prostration. Surah Al-Fat, Surah Al-Fijr, two places, the exact words have been repeated. And the spirit, you know, the spiritual existence, it again has been bestowed with three faculties. Number one, the discrimination between good and evil. Number two, the cognition, the knowledge of Allah. Because this rule is from Him. And number three, an intense love for Allah. Although most of the human beings, in them this love for Allah is perverted to the love of this world. It is perversion of that love which should have been directed towards Allah, the Creator, the Lord, the Sustainer. But you, you start loving this world, wealth. power, some idea, some ideology. And that Quran says, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَتَّخِذُ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ أَنْدَادًا يُحِبُّونَهُمْ كَحُبِّ اللَّهِ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنْ وَشَدُّ حُبًّا لِلَّهِ This love, intense love, actually, it is, you should love Allah, adore Him, worship Him. But there are people, who create their own gods, the wealth, the power, the urge to dominate, to have more and more of worldly belongings, or some ideology, nationalism, and you start loving them. Basically, these are the three basic faculties in our spirits. On the basis of these faculties, every human being is responsible and accountable. I explained this point yesterday. But I want to dilate upon this point. I am adding two points. Number one, the confrontation between evil and good is going on all the time within our personality and there are forces outside abetting the evil in us as well as the good in us. What are those? Within our own selves we have the nafsul ammara, which commands us to something bad. Lust of this world and carnal desires, our animal instincts. In the nafsul ammara to the soul. According to Freud, you can say this is the id or libido in man, lowest level of human personality. But within us there is the spirit, 
it wants us to love Allah, to worship Him, to seek His proximity, qurb, taqarrub in Allah. There is a quarrel going on, a struggle going on within the personality of each one of us, between these two forces, which are opposing each other. Point number nine, there are invisible forces outside our personality. There is the shaitan, the iblis, and his progeny, invisible jinns, shayateen. They are exciting our carnal desires, our animal instincts. Allah the yuvasvis of his sudur in nas. This is the vasvasa. In the shaitana yajri min al-insane majrat dam. But on the other side also we have malaika angels. They support us. They persuade the good in us, support the good in us and persuade us to do good deeds. Inna al-lazina qalu rabbuna allahu summa staqamu tatanazzalu alayhimu al-malaikatu allah taqafu wa la tahzalu wa abshiru bil jannati allati kuntum tu'adun. Now the last point. I told you every human being is responsible on the basis of those three plus three faculties bestowed on him. Three belonging to alam khalq three belonging to alam amr The sama, the basr and the intellect to this body. The discrimination of good and evil, between good and evil, the knowledge of Allah, the gnosis of Allah, and the love of Allah in the Ruh. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made our period of testing this worldly life easy by sending wahi through angels to selected persons, selected human beings, and directing them, guide people to the right path, take them out from the darknesses of kufr and shirk and ilhad and agnosticism, Take them out of these, these darknesses unto the light of Imam. So this wahi brought by angels, recorded in the form of books. The recipients of the wahi, the Anbiya and the Rusul, the Prophets and the Messengers of Allah. This goes to make the Iman the Risala. And actually, after the sending of these messengers, now the hujjah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala became complete in every respect. Rusulam mubashireen wa munzireen li Allah yakuna lil nasi ala Allah hujjatun ba'da rusul wa kaan Allahu aziz al hakima. We sent our messengers as mubashireen who gave glad tidings to those who took to the right path. Wa munzireen warned those who are turning away from the right path towards the wrong and evil ways. So that there should remain with the human beings no excuse after these messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for remaining on the wrong path. That is why after the advent of the messengers there was no concession given to the human beings. Now the hujjah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is complete over you. And the people, the nations who rejected the messengers of Allah were wiped out of existence on this earth. What happened to, and these, these incidents have been repeated in the Quran so many times. What happened to the people of Nuh? What happened to the people of Hud? What happened to the pe people of Saleh? What happened to the those two cities, the twin cities of Sodom and Amora, to whom Luth was sent? What happened to Pharaoh and his army? What happened to the people of Madian, to whom Shraib was sent? Alayhim as salatu was salam. Wide doubt of existence. And number two, they are going to be punished in the fire of hell forever.
So that is actually the place of Rusul. They are mercy unto mankind because they showed the right path. But then you can say that in a way people to whom no messenger was sent, they were in a better position. Why? They could plead ignorance. Oh Allah! No Rasul came to us. So we, you know, should be excused. رُسُلَمْ مُبَشِّرِينَ وَمُنْذِرِينَ لِأَلَّا يَكُونَ لِلنَّاسِ عَلَى اللَّهِ حُجَّةٌ بَعْدَ الرُسُلِ Only a person knows Arabic and knows the difference between Lam and Allah. لِلنَّاسِ عَلَى اللَّهِ There should be remain no excuse in favor of human beings against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is against His accountability. Oh Allah! You didn't send us any messenger. Your guidance didn't come to us. So we may be excused. But this excuse vanished when the prophets came. And that is why they were punished. وَمَا كُنَّا مُعَذَّبِينَ حَتَّى نَبْعَثَ رَسُولًا That punishment by which the nations, whole nations were wiped out, they only came to the nations to whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent some of the messenger. So, brothers and sisters, this is the philosophy of Iman. Very important subject. We have been ignoring Iman. Supposing that we have Iman because we are Muslims, we are born Muslims, we have Iman. The points which I have made, please note, there can be some difference of opinion regarding the explanations and detailed, you know, explanation and interpretation. But the main points are all agreed upon by all the people who know Qur'an and the Sunnah of Muhammad May Allah give us the correct and full understanding of Iman. And then may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us real Iman, real belief. Iman with, a, with an element and dimension of intellectual understanding. Basira, as the Prophet was ordered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to claim and say and proclaim, قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي أَدْوَوْ إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَىٰ بَصِيرَةٍ أَنَا وَمَنِ اتَّبَعَانِي Say out, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to the people, this is the path which I have taken myself and I am calling you to this path with basira, not blindly. I have the insight of all these things. And not only that, I have the insight. Wa mani tabani, also those who are following me. Abu Bakr, for example, he has all the insight. May Allah make us one of them. Aqulu qali haza wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisairi muslimin wa al-muslimat.